Since the pandemic, the everything bubble has well and truly exploded. Now, it's been called that for obvious reasons. Stocks and equities, cryptocurrencies, real estate, luxury goods, and even car prices have exploded in value to form a monstrous bubble. Things, though, are not starting to look so good anymore. A recession is knocking at the door of almost every single Western country in the world. There have been tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of layoffs across the US, with every week another tech company coming out announcing that they're firing 20% of their staff. Those businesses which aren't outright firing their staff are slowing down their hiring exponentially. Inflation is close to 10% and we just got a brand new print and it turns out it isn't really fooling. There is a cost of living crisis and people are frankly feeling poorer than ever. Now the everything bubble is all starting to fall apart and so we enter into the world of the car crash apocalypse. Prices of cars have soared but now they are just about to head their way back down. The consequences of this are actually far, far greater than it might seem and this video is going to explain exactly what happened, what's happening right now and why it's all just so important. Now where did this all come from in the first place though? Why did car prices boom out of nowhere? Well, there are two sides to this story as with almost all asset bubbles. There are the demand issues at play and the supply issues as well. We'll start then with demand then because it's pretty obvious what happened. This will be a familiar story to any frequent viewers of this channel. The governments all over the world reacted to the virus and the lockdowns and they tried to stop the spread. Every economy in the world changed overnight and massive stimulus came into play to try and prop up this economy. It solved the problem in the short term as money printing usually does, but it has now caused massive monumental problems in the long term. The car market bubble is probably one of the least expected problems, but it's still there nonetheless. Most people choose to focus on a equity bubble, a stock market bubble, a crypto or NFT bubble, or even a bond bubble. Behind the scenes though, the car market was experiencing a bubble as well. The huge influx of cash into the economy, this money printing that put literal dollars in people's wallets and bank accounts, came at the exact same time as people simply weren't able to spend the money on the things that they usually would. Restaurants on holidays were off the table, for example. Loads of people then found themselves in the best of both worlds. Stimulus checks from the government while still working from home at their usual pay and more money than they knew what to do with. They could still buy cars though, and so they did. And demand shot right up for everyday normal people. To make that effect even stronger, debt was cheaper than it had ever been before with 0% interest rates all the world over. And that means cheaper car loans too. Someone earning $50,000 a year might have only been able to afford a $20,000 car before the pandemic, but after that pandemic came and went, suddenly they were looking at $40,000 for a car because that debt was just so much cheaper. There are, of course, a bunch of other things at play as well, though. The growth of YouTube and Instagram, for example, has led to an incessant culture of flexing. It's become easier than ever to boast and show off about your new toys. 20 years ago, if you wanted someone to see and know that you've just bought a nice car, you had to drive around in it and physically be seen. Nowadays, though, 1,000 more people can see your nice new car just by posting it on Instagram. We've now entered a new paradigm of luxury goods that I don't think will ever end. They are more visible than ever and thus more desirable than ever as well. This happened with the car market along with the watch market and luxury goods market too. Desirable cars like AMG, Mercedes and BMW M cars shot up in value. Performance SUVs or 4x4s like the Lamborghini Urus exploded in value as every celebrity in the world bought one and showed it off on their Instagram. This of course caused demand to strengthen even further. Then, of course, we had the issue of Tina, or there is no alternative. As asset prices grew with massive quantitative easing and money printing across the board, lots of people looked for smart investments. Of course, they looked at the usual things like equities and real estate, which was as popular as ever, of course, but many people looked to alternative assets. Thus grew the prevalence of investments like crypto, NFTs, luxury watches, and of course, expensive cars. Brand new, hard to find Ferraris or Porsches were suddenly investments themselves. You could walk into a factory if you're lucky enough to be allowed to buy one and sell a car a week later for a quick 20% profit. This, of course, drove demand further for these vehicles because they are so desirable and so profitable as well, but a similar thing happened with old collectible cars too. Old Ferraris, old Aston Martins or Mercedes, basically anything that the average person would look at and say, wow, that's pretty, they saw their prices rise as well. But again, not because people necessarily wanted these cars to actually own them and to drive them, but because they were seen as investments. 
In short, demand for cars absolutely exploded due to all of these factors and a couple other smaller ones as well, and not just in one country like the USA. This happened in the UK, in mainland Europe, in Canada, Australia, and pretty much everywhere that saw gross money printing. Demand though is only one side of the price equation as I earlier mentioned. Supply is just as important and the story there doesn't disappoint us at all. The supply chain crisis is well documented though, so I'll spare you too many details. As lockdowns took place all over the world, they were particularly strong in some manufacturing centers like in China. The workshop of the world quite literally shut down and its factories closed with it. Of course, we also saw shutdowns in every other country too, in countries like Germany and the US. The point is here that fewer cars were being made every day outright than a year prior. We also saw fewer components for cars being made too, in particular with microchips, which in 2020 was now essential for 99% of the cars to be built. And to tip it all off, even transporting cars across the world got more difficult. In anticipation of a worldwide financial collapse in wake of the COVID pandemic, thousands of ships were destroyed and sold off for scrap that would usually have been carrying cars all around the world. Their owners decided that it would cost too much to keep them afloat for months with no revenue and they of course didn't foresee a booming economy as lockdowns happened instead of a crashing one. As you can see, it was a perfect storm. Car prices shot up both from excessive demand and from limited supply. This effect was seen all over the world and in all different types of markets. In the US, car prices rose by over 40% over the course of one year. That beats stocks, housing, art investing, bond investing, and even many cryptocurrencies during a bull run. But now, things are starting to change. We're entering what's being called a car price apocalypse as pressure on prices is easing, and analysts are predicting the greatest car crash in history. Now, it might not surprise you to hear this, but most cars these days are bought with finance, not with cash. These loans, though, are more risky and less safe than you probably think they are. Income checks aren't actually done on the vast majority of purchases as banks and dealerships mostly just run on the honor system. Around 50% of car loans that are out there right now are under negative equity so the car is worth less than the loan overbearing it. That means that if you stop payments and the bank takes your car to sell it to try and cover that loan, the bank will not get all of its money back even with car prices at extraordinary highs where they are today. To make matters worse though, these subprime loans don't just affect the car market but the whole financial market as well. Car loans made out by banks or dealerships are usually packaged up and sold off to investors. This helps to reduce the risk for a dealership who is in the business of selling cars, not of giving out loans. The problem with this though, and you might be able to tell where this is going, is that this is the exact same thing that banks did with mortgages back in the housing market crash that started in around about 2006. These loans being sold to investors also tend to be very risky and have very high rates of defaults as well. Now this was all fine when car prices were rising massively. If you default on your car payment, then there's no worries. The car is now worth more than you bought it for and more than the loan as well, so no one actually loses out here. When prices start to fall in the car market though, like we saw with the housing market, that all changes. The fundamental problem here is that the mortgage market changed after 2008 to make sure that the same crisis didn't happen again but bankers still wanted their paydays and they made a lot of money in the run up to 2008. So they did it again, just in a different market that hadn't seen these new restrictive regulations. Right now, we're actually just past the peak of used car prices as the bubble is already starting to burst. Used car prices have been falling across the US for a couple of months now. And the reason for this is simple. The supply chain crisis is slowly but surely being eased out. So more cars are coming for sale from that. We're also seeing a recession start to take hold across the country. Every week, there's another bit of news from a tech company firing a thousand staff and salaries are getting lower when adjusted for inflation every month. This all works to cut down demand for cars. We're now also seeing repossessions soar and this adds a little bit more supply to the market too. These effects will drive down car prices and it will be pretty major. This is not all awful news though. This alone is not as big as the 08 housing market crash despite the many similarities. Car loans are on average far smaller than mortgages and it's far easier to sell a car than it is to sell a house. Most car loans are also based on fixed interest rates too. So as interest rates rise every time the Federal Reserve makes an announcement, car loans that are already made aren't actually getting more expensive. For those people who have a car that they really can't afford though, on an interest rate they can't afford, 
the time to get out without losing your money is really starting to run thin. As always, we should strive to just be a little bit careful with our money, not to spend it on things that we can't afford. We shouldn't bankrupt ourselves with massive car loans just to impress our friends online. And we of course shouldn't bury our heads in the sand and pretend that a problem like this simply doesn't exist. I also feel like it's worth mentioning that this isn't actually a new idea. Every time there's a major recession, luxury good prices and car prices fall. The very simple idea behind it is that when people get poorer, they hold back on spending. There's actually this pretty infamous clip from old Top Gear from 2009, where the gang go through and talk about crashing car prices and just how insane it seemed to all of them. Jeremy Clarkson brings up a VW Phaeton that was bought for £60,000 and 18 months later was sold for £17,000, a drop of 72%. James May brings up an Aston Martin bought for £175,000 that was then sold for just £50,000 just a few months later, with the price again down by 72%. A nice big Mercedes Coupe though that was bought for £100,000 was worth just £16,000 a couple of years later. Now that was an unusually large recession, but no larger than the one that we're currently staring down the barrel of. And we now have the unfortunate fact that we are facing supply changes as well as demand changes this time around. Frankly, I think the term car price apocalypse is far more fitting than it might seem at first. And I won't be surprised at all if in a few years time, we were all looking back and laughing at those who bought cars at the peak, just as Hammond, Clarkson and May were doing just over a decade ago.